Oh, hi. I'm going to do my first ever fragrance haul video. So, um, well, it's not my first ever fragrance haul. It's probably like my second fragrance haul. And uh, I do usually buy throughout the year all my fragrances uh, on pretty regular occasion. But once a year I tend to do what's considered a massive fragrance haul uh, and this one seems to be the most massive one that I've done so far in this box um, it's coming up to my birthday so I thought I've, I should treat myself uh, and uh, usually I don't celebrate my birthday uh, but I guess at my age making it through another year is a is cause for a celebration so um i'm going to see what's in this box uh so i guess this is an unboxing and sort of a little bit of commentary on the things that i've purchased and why i've purchased them uh to add to my collection so um yeah stay tuned hope you enjoy um and uh without further ado let's uh have a look at my massive haul I'm just going to uh, open up the box. The box is already fragrant because I couldn't wait. And I already opened... I'm just going to move it out of the way a little bit. Pretty heavy. Um, already opened it. So um, let's, uh, let's get into this first one. I'm just going to, without even looking, just grab one. And we've got Moschino toy boy toy boy now i heard a lot about this one it was very interesting i actually did test it out at uh at a shop and uh, tried it on my skin uh, my first impression when i when i wore this it was like what the hell is this why is everybody going crazy about it and um, it wasn't until we got home later um, after coming back from the shops and it was still radiating it's actually quite strong and um yeah the dry down really just really it's different it's attention grabbing and i thought it was worthy of a full bottle purchase and plus the bottle is quite gimmicky and i love gimmicks so mosquito toy boy i'm just gonna place it here and start to sort of stack these things up okay um next next on the mic is my man hank okay here we go. What's this one? CK1 shock. What a shock this is that I actually don't have this in my collection. Everybody craps on about how this is really good. Uh, I have tested this many, many years ago and didn't think that much of it, but at the price it was at, I probably just couldn't say no. Um, big 200 mil bottle as well. So um, CK1 shock, not much to say about that. Um, Next one is Mercedes-Benz Club Black. Uh, this one I haven't actually tried to blind buy. Um, based on the notes, I think I should like it. Um, some of these I'll probably do a full review on after I get to wear them um, a few times and find out what they're like. Okie dokie. Let's move on. What's this one? Oh, yes. La Lique Pour Home. This is the lion's head one. I have had the horse's head one uh, back in 2013. I was wearing that throughout the throughout the warm season, actually. That one had a lot of pepper at the, at the top, uh, and that was the lion's head one. This is the ho sorry, that was the horse's head one. This is the lion's head one. Um, it gets great reviews. I've never tested it. It is another blind buy, and it's lavender based. I'm not a fan of lavender. I don't generally do lavender kind of scents. I like things to be heavy. I like my fragrances to be heavy and dark. I love the darkness. I like dark. So um, this will be a little bit of a change. So uh, Lalique, Pohom, Pohom, Pohom. I don't know. Um, lion's Head. Um, the bottle is nice. So Lalique always do nice bottles. Next one is, oh, this one, Azaro Pohom uh, Ginger Lover. It's got nothing to do with redheads. Uh, it's actually the root ginger, the fragrant sort of root ginger. Uh, again, this, I bought the hype. 
I must say, um, I do like ginger in fragrances up top, um, but it'd be different because everyone says this is ginger all the way through, so it's quite linear in that, in that way. Um, I hope it's not the edible ginger type of, uh, of fragrance, but we'll find out, I guess, when I open these up. They're still in the packaging. Alrighty. Uh, next one I already opened last night because I was very intrigued by this one and no one really talks about this one. This is Black Agent by Pascal Morabito, um, more famously known for uh, Or, or, or Black. That's, that's the one with the sort of like the chrome fascia on the bottle with the screws. Uh, this one's all black and rubberized. This is very similar to uh, I find it very similar to Costume National Homme and uh, it's very clovey. I get a lot of clove. But again, that was, a, that was a first spray. I haven't let it macerate yet and, and, and sort of develop inside, inside the bottle, let, let some air inside the bottle. I'll give this a few more wearings uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, again, I'm very intrigued. It did, it did come across really nice. It had like a smoke in the back uh, at, at, the, at the base of that. And... Um, yeah, like I said, I like the dark fragrances and I like the fact that this one has smoke and uh, clove up top, which is, which is quite good. Next is uh, Jean Couturier uh, Coriander. Uh, and this one, um, I just like the bottle actually. I opened it up just, just to check because the, the bottle is quite cool. Check it out, it's all like frosted glass. I think I already got like fingerprints all over it. You've got frosted glass and it's got this nice sort of cap which is uh plastic but it's a it's a nice plastic um and this one mm, yeah it, it's quite nice coriander seed i get from from that but it's not in the opening the opening's a bit more creamy for some reason um i'm gonna probably gonna run out of space here um quite shortly uh this one Guerlain om uh, I went for the smaller bottle because it's the older bottle style. Yeah, I know. Um, I didn't go for the newer bottle style. Um, everyone says this is cool, so uh, let's see. We're heading into a, the warmer season, and so I might give this a try. Guerlain, usually you can't go wrong with Guerlain's, so um, again, another blind buy. Um, so far, all of these except for the Moschino and the CK1 Shock are blind buys. Um, Oh boy, um, and mainly because we haven't been allowed out of the house for any other reason other than to do grocery shopping. Um, these aren't groceries, so we haven't been able to go out and, and test things. Uh, next one is another Guerlain. Uh, this is Black Perfecto by Le, Le Petit Robe Noir. Uh, I really like the notes on this one. When I read it, it's a cherry and leather, uh, but it's quite feminine. And if you don't like feminine kind of uh, fragrances, it's probably not for you, but um, I don't mind them. To me, like I said, like I mentioned in previous videos, I don't really think there's such a thing as a men's fragrance. It's just um, whether you like the smell or you don't like the smell and that's it really. And I like this one. Um, it's quite powdery. It's it's um it, the cherry in this one. It's a medicinal cherry. There was these uh, lozenges, throat lozenges called Halls Halls Cherry Throat Lozenges. That's this. That's the top note of this, mixed with uh, a powdery suede leather. Yeah, really cool and um, um, quite uh, quite a, quite a large sort of scent cloud that it brings around you. So I sprayed it on my, on my jacket, which was like n next to me on a seat and I could smell it all day long, even off clothes. So imagine what it would do off skin as your skin warms up. Okay, I'm gonna put this down here. Uh, okay, next one is a classic. I haven't had this for about 20 something years. Um, blue jeans. Uh, I think I used to also have like a bottle of the baby blue jeans as well back in the day. Um, but this is the old classic blue jeans. Like I said, I don't like lavender, but this is really something else. It's, 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 it says blue jeans, man, but it's quite unisex. 
anyone can wear this at any time of the year, at any day. It's really versatile and I don't think it's actually aged at all, at all. Um, some people who know fragrances might pick it uh, as, as a 90s kind of scent, but I don't think so. I don't think it's aged. Uh, the next one is probably another one. It's another, oh, sorry, that was a Versace blue jeans. I didn't, I didn't do this, so I should do this to let you know what that was. Uh, this is the tester, the Versace, uh, Versace the Dreamer. Now, this I wore today. That's why there's maybe a little bit missing. Um, maybe there's a lot missing. I kind of sprayed a bit, a, a quite a bit. Um, takes me back. I used to have a bottle of this um, back in the 90s as well. Uh, and for some reason, I prefer this because I, I still remember. The scent, is, the scent is almost the same, except the... The one, the, the vintage one, has a uh, really synthetic opening, which I recall it hurting my throat. It was that um, aromatic. I can't say pungent because it smelled nice, but it was really synthetic. It was really harsh. Uh, and in the new one, it's been dialed down a little bit, that, that top note uh, of the synthetic lavender. That's what it is. Um, now I remember. Okay. Uh, moving on, I'm only briefly mentioning uh, a little bit of something about each one of these because there's there's quite a few to go through. The box isn't, we're not even halfway through the box. So um, I might do separate reviews of these uh, on different videos. Uh, okay, um, just to just to complete my collection, uh, Lalique Encre Noir Sport. Um, I do have the original. I've been to two bottles of the original. Really like it. That dark inky sort of vetiver is uh, is right up my alley, uh, with the with the smoke behind it. But um, at the moment, I'm rocking the Ala Extreme, uh, which I like better because it's just got a lot more smoke behind it. So uh, this one apparently is a little bit different, but it probably still contains the same DNA. Um, haven't tried it. Blind buy. So. Encre Noir Sports. Uh, next one, we have uh, Narciso Rodriguez uh, for him. So the commonly touted as wet concrete uh, smell. Um, intriguing. Why not? Uh, if the quality's there, then it's there. Um, Narciso Rodriguez already known for doing really good musk perfumes, and this contains musk as one of the very few notes that have been described, that have been um, uh, surfaced for this fragrance um, online. Anyway, never tried it. So we'll wait for a rainy day and maybe um, spray it on myself and see if I smell like concrete. Okay, next one is another hype monster, hype beast that I purchased. Everybody knows this bottle is Versace Man O Fresh. I have smelled this. I did test this at the shop. I didn't blind buy. Um, it's really, it's really nice. I can't wait for summer. Spring's around the corner. And I can't wait until it heats up here in Melbourne. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll be allowed out of the house, and I'll be able to rock this in the warmer months. Okay. Next, we have this one. This is this is an interesting one. It's it's Club de Nuit Intense. Uh, for women, this one. So this one is very different to Club de Nuit Intense Man, which is my wife's favorite uh, for a very long time. Um, and I really also enjoy that one as well. Again, with the darkness and the oak moss. Don't like the lemon, it's a bit harsh, but we, you get used to it, you do. Um, by the time you spray it on when you're at home, um, you get in the car and you go somewhere to be in your office or wherever you're going to meet someone, that lemon has pretty much uh, been toned down and has allowed those mid notes to come up anyway. So, uh, But this one is very different. This one is a rose-based, rose-forward uh, fragrance. Uh, I do have a couple of rose fragrances. Um, my favorite at the moment is the um, Flora Botanica by, Balen by Balenciaga. 
which I like because of the greenness of the rose. I'm not a big fan of rose because I grew up in the Middle East and every dessert has rose water in it and it reminds me of food and I don't want that. Not a big fan of the rose scent, but I do like the stem. Um, interested to find out what this smells like. Again, another blind buy. Next, uh, we have uh, New West by uh, Aramis and know nothing about it. Um, I had Aramis, uh, the original Aramis Borom, um, back in the day. I've got another couple of bottles of that. It's really cool when I feel very um, old school and gentlemanly and I'm wanting to wear my tweed jacket, I'll, I'll chuck it on. Um, wonder what this is like. Apparently this is a more an aromatic scent than, than a woody. Woody. Okay, uh, this one, Halloween Man X. Halloween Man X. Um, I have the Halloween Man shot, and that's pretty good. Uh, good value, once again, cheap as sh Wait, I can't swear. Really cheap. Um, and coffee, burnt coffee. I do like the smell of burnt coffee, and I do like the smell of wet concrete. And I do like the smell of both of them together. I might, I might mix these. I've got, I also ordered a whole bunch of um, little glass uh, spray uh, containers uh, for decanting. Um, but I won't be decanting. I'll be mixing them, and I'll be, and I'll be experimenting probably with this and this. I reckon. Wet concrete and burnt coffee. I think that's a winner, in my book anyway. Uh, which I do have a book, but that's uh, a topic for a different video if you want to search my book. Um, ooh, this one, Hypnose by Lancome. Now, I haven't had a Lancome fragrance since ooh, the early 2000s. I had uh, Miracle uh, Pour Homme uh, in the 2000s, and I remember that, and I still remember the scent of that. And I'm, I'm on. I'm disappointed that that's still not around, but the miracle for women is still around, um, which doesn't make sense to me because I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, hoping that I enjoy this one. I really like the look of the bottle um, and the notes look really interesting as well. So I'll give this a shot, I thought. So blind buy once again. Okay. Oh, here's one from Blast from the Past. This is uh, Havana by Aramis. So yes, I did have a bottle of this. Uh, back in the day, um, this, I don't know if it was this one or was the one that was called Havana Reserva. Uh, it came in a blue bottle with a dark blue cap. Uh, I remember wearing it during the summer and it was brilliant. It was just really, really cool. It was like that sort of damp, uh, I don't know, humid sort of smell. That's what it was. It was it's probably it's probably the worst description ever but that's what it was so i'm hoping this isn't all that different um, and i hear that they're being discontinued so i'm not quite sure where that talk is coming from so i thought i might at least get one just for nostalgia's sake now here's one that i've not had before and and I have no idea what it's going to be like. Uh, it's certainly not going to be like the tobacco note in Havana. This is Insurrection to Wild. Often gets compared to many other things. So I figure why not? It's, it's again, a, a, real, a real cheap one. So I don't know. I don't have too high of an expectation for it. Uh, but I do have high expectations for this. This is Pasha de Cartier Parfum. Again, I read the notes and this is right up my alley with, with the resins and the, just the darkness and the deepness. So I hope it's not as sweet as what I'm thinking it's going to be. I find that the modern fragrances, they just get sweeter and sweeter and I'm not a fan of the sweet. I'm sweet enough as it is. So really... Uh, well, I hope if there's a cold enough day, I'll pop this on, but um, I might just hang on to that a little bit. Let's see what else is here in this box. We keep going. This is, uh, this is getting a bit crazy. Uh, Burberry Touch. 
I have tried this once before, um, a couple of years ago. I do recall the opening didn't really grab me very much, uh, but when it dried down, it was actually really good. And um, I saw it for a really good price. I couldn't turn it down. So there it is, Burberry Touch. Um, yeah, let's put that there. If there's enough. Oh, 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 we're getting to the, um, to the smaller bottles. Um, I, went and I went ahead and got a few small bottles as well. This is Bulgari Man Black Cologne. I did test this uh, a couple of nights ago, just, just on my hand. And uh, it was very aromatic, very nice, very fresh. I did like it. And so I'll probably, I don't like these dab bottles. I'll show you what it's like. It's um, very difficult to open. I'm not going to show you what it's like because it's too difficult to open. But once I do manage to open it, probably out of anger, I might just smash the box or cut the box open. Uh, I'll decant it into a spray bottle just to make it easier to just grab and spray. Uh, I got this one as well. This is Aspen Discovery. Small bottle of this one because it's just too cheap side. So didn't want to go for a big bottle of something like this. It is, I don't know if this is the smell, I'm pretty sure this is turned and I'm, I'm very upset because out of everything that I ordered to have this one turned, it, it's, it's funky. It's not, it's not supposed to be funky. Yeah, I, I sprayed this on my hand when I got it and uh, I, I couldn't wait to wash it off. As a matter of fact, I've never actually washed off a fragrance that I've sprayed on, but I really wanted to wash this one off. But I thought, man, maybe that's the smell. Maybe it'll develop, but it didn't. It just, it didn't develop. It just stayed funky and it just, I think it's, I think it's off. It's, it's, it's turned. So yeah, I thought maybe I'll give it another spray. Anyway, move along. Uh, and I got some samples. Uh, what's this one? Mercedes-Benz Eau de Toilette. Uh, it's a sample. Nothing to say about that one. It kind of smells like Mercedes-Benz Intense, which I have a bottle of already, and that kind of smells like Fahrenheit. Uh, it's a more linear version of, of, of the original Fahrenheit. But actually, the violet in the Mercedes-Benz smells more like violet than the original Fahrenheit. The original Fahrenheit actually smells like gasoline. The Mercedes-Benz smells like violet. Uh, and the new Fahrenheit's have just dialed that... Well, not, I don't know about the brand new Fahrenheit's, but the one that I tested uh, about a year and a half ago just didn't have it. I thought, hmm, this is pleasant. And then I thought, wait, I'm not supposed to be enjoying the top note of Fahrenheit. Um, this much and I noticed that the, the petrol vibe had really been um, dialed down. Uh, this one uh, is a seven and a half mil uh, sort of spray, uh, travel spray kind of thing of uh, Fendi, Fan de Fendi. Um, really liked because I had a bottle of the Asaluto, the Fan de Fendi Asaluto, which is again a darker version of this, but I do really enjoy this one as well. It's very similar to the Asaluto. Not much of it, and uh, seeing as they've all been discontinued, uh, they used to be quite cheap as well. I thought I'd grab one just to check this one out. Uh, I know there is a Fan de Fendi <clears throat> Aqua, but I don't like those kind of fragrances, so I'm not interested. Uh, the next one is another sample, and this is He Wood uh, by D Squared. He Wood Rocky Mountain Wood. I always saw this and I always read the notes and I thought, okay, this is pretty cool. But um, at the time when this was available, so was Gucci Pour Om One, which is my favorite fragrance of all time. And so I never bothered. Uh, and so now that's 850 bucks a bottle. This is also not available, but I thought at least if there's a tester and I found one for like a couple of bucks, I thought might as well try it out. So. That's that one. It smelled pretty good. Here's one, uh, Dolce Gabbana Pour Homme. They sent me the wrong one. The picture had uh, the original 
tester uh, logo on it with the silver backing. This one's just got the regular lettering. Uh, it is the made in Germany one. So it is the, the weaker performing one. The smell is kind of the same, but again, the tobacco I think has been dialed down in this one. Um, I did test it. It did disappear very quickly. I can't imagine what the made in England ones are like. I've never even tested that. Um, but yeah, hard to get a vintage batch of this uh, at a decent price anyway. I thought I was lucky, but I wasn't. Next is another one with a Zaro Pour Homme, the original. But again, I did have a bottle of this. I went through it and I thought, yeah, it was quite nice. But then after reading up about it, I read that it's been reformulated and the original is much, much better. Uh, again, as with any reformulation talk, the original is always better. But I think it's not the case with Versace's The Dreamer. Uh, Zaro Pour Homme, it's a tester. Again, uh, the picture showed the old uh, tester. Uh, but they sent me the, the new one, the old sample, but they sent me the new one. Um, and it smells just like the bottle I had, so not impressed. <clears throat> Moving on, what else is in here? Oh yeah, here we go. I accidentally ordered <laughs> Cinema by Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, and by, by accident, I mean, I have tested Cinema uh, before, but I tested the Eau de Parfum. Uh, which has the, the two main notes switched around. So this is more uh, mimosa forward. Uh, it's a bit brighter. This is the Eau de Toilette, uh, the, sam the, the little, what is it? It's an eight mil uh, bottle. It's an Eau de Toilette. Uh, it's a bit more floral. It's a bit more brighter. Uh, again, it's really beautiful. It doesn't really last anywhere near as long as the Eau de Parfum. Forget about this one. Uh, the scent is nice but the Eau de Parfum is just so much better. Um, just go for that. And I think I might pony up for it for, for a full bottle because I can't find a small bottle of it anywhere. So that's Cinema uh, by uh, Yves Saint Laurent. Whoa, and soon to be broken. Okay, uh, this one. Oh, here's another one. Uh, it's Eau Masculine by Lolita Lempica. And this is another one that for, for ages, for years and years, uh, everyone raved about it. I knew uh, it was good. The notes I like, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, anise in, um, in, in fragrances. And I, I don't know why I never bought it. It was cheap as well and I never purchased it. Um, most likely because I was able to still buy uh, Gucci Pour on one. Why would you buy anything else if you have that? So I found this tester and I did spray it on my arm and lo and behold, it's fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, but again, I'm not gonna pony up for gray market prices for a full bottle. And uh, if you read a little bit more into it, the Lempica Ohm is apparently pretty much exactly the same as this minus a dash of performance and maybe one or two notes that are, are a bit more muted than they are in this one. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, if you do want that Lolita Lempica Au Masculine vibe, you can get it from Lempica Om, which is still widely available everywhere. So I, I will look into Lempica Om. Is there anything left? Oh, last but not least, Here's one I'm crying about. Uh, this is Fahrenheit Absolute. It's again another tester and wow. I just have to say this is probably not even related to Fahrenheit. It does, it smells nothing like Fahrenheit. It's probably got that um, violet note buried really deep in uh, the opening and slightly into the mid, but once the first half of the, once the beginning of the mid sort of wears down, um, that violet's nowhere to be seen. It's this resinous, uh, balsamic, uh, not balsamic, balsamy, balsamic. It sounds like balsam, balsamic vinegar, um, but it's not vinegar-like at all. It's actually very nice. It's, it's sweet without being sweet. Uh, and I really, really liked it. I really, really liked it. Unfortunately, it's, 
to, to get a bottle of this now, it's like 450 bucks, and I think it's worth it, to be honest. Um, and, I, and I paid uh, a lot for a little sample of this because the notes were so intriguing. Um, I'm upset. But them's the breaks. So that's all I've got. And I'll enjoy it when, I, when I've got it. So some of the, I've got a lot of uh, fragrances to open up and test and happy birthday to me. So this is what, this is what Treat Yourself is all about. Uh, and the box is officially empty. I'll throw it down there. And yes, so there we have it. Um, uh, my, my first ever video graft massive fragrance haul. Uh, I hope to be doing a lot more of these as I get older, which, well, I don't have a choice in the matter. It's going to happen anyway. Uh, but until that time, I'm going to test these out and I'm going to push out some video reviews. So please do the YouTube thing, like, share, subscribe notification bell, all of those good things. And uh, we'll talk about these fragrances uh, in my way. And as you've noticed in my videos, I don't tend to talk about notes as much as I have in, in this video. I've talked about notes quite a bit, um, but I do tend to talk about the, the vibe and the feel of, of a particular fragrance. And um, I've started to mix my own Frankenstein fragrances together uh, because you know my collection's big enough and I'm experienced enough now to know, hmm, you know what, I'm not gonna go ahead and, and buy a kit and make my own fragrance. I'm actually going to start thinking, oh yeah, this could go with this and start mixing them up and see what happens. Uh, sometimes it'll end up really bad, but sometimes it might not. So uh, keep an eye out for that and uh, thanks for watching.